Hello, this is part two of a pair of screencasts on plotting functions of two variables in MATLAB. In part one, we saw how to produce a basic plot of one of these kinds of functions. First, we define a grid of x, y values using the mesh grid command. Then we define the z values by using a formula on x and y. Then we use the mesh command to produce the basic plot. Here's an example. First in MATLAB, let's suppose I want to plot the function z equals cosine of x times y. So I need, first of all, to define the grid of x, y points I want to use. Let's say that for now I want x to go between negative pi and pi, and I also want y to go from negative pi to pi. So I can define x equal to lin space negative pi pi, and this will create a vector of 100 values starting at negative pi and ending at positive pi. And I can define y the same way. Now to create the grid of x, y points I'm going to plot, I need to type x, y in square brackets equals mesh grid x, y. And that's a lot of points, so I'm going to suppress the output with a semicolon. Now I'm going to define the outputs z using the function. z equals cosine x times y and put a semicolon after that as well. Note the dot before the asterisk. Since x and y are actually arrays and not just single numbers, I need to have a dot asterisk there to do element-wise multiplication. Hit enter, and now I'm going to produce the mesh by typing mesh of x, y, z. Now this gives us a nice colored 3D plot of the function. But now, and what we want to take up in this screencast is, what can we do with it? When we plotted a function of one variable using the plot command, we often went to the plot tools window to access a point and click interface for tweaking that plot. Fortunately, there is a plot tools window also for two variable functions, and it works in basically the exact same way. Now, first of all, note that anything I can do, or almost anything I can do in the plot tools window, I can also do by command line plot options. But for this screencast, we're going to keep it point and click and graphical and just stick to the plot tools window. The icon to open the plot tools window is right here. It's the exact same icon icon and in the same place as it is for one variable functions. If I click it, I get the plot that I made, but also several clickable areas for doing various things to the plot. For example, if I want to add a title to the plot, I can click inside the white area and type in my text to the title field. For example, if I wanted to call this plot of z equals cosine x, y, I just type it in and you see that the plot or the title appears automatically on the top. I can also change the color of the background. I see from white to whatever I feel like, say green. I think I like white better. Uh, I can change the color of the grid lines. And I can choose which variables have grid lines. I can uncheck x or y or z and leave them checked to show different directions of grid. I can also click box to add a complete solid wireframe around the entire plot. Now if I click on the plot itself, I get several more options. When you plot a mesh, it plots the individual points and lines connecting them and also puts little polygon faces in between the lines. I can change the colors of those faces to whatever I choose to change the look, or I might leave the color completely out, which will create a sort of transparent wireframe. Let's go back to white here. I can also change the style of the edges and the thickness of the edges. I can also choose whether or not I want the individual markers plotted. Now one more option that's available to mesh plots is what's called a color map. Now you probably notice, it's pretty obvious, that when you create a mesh here, it's multicolored and the different colors correspond to different height levels. Now the rules that MATLAB uses to color different height levels is called a color map. If I go out and click all the way out into the gray area surrounding the plot, I have a pull down menu that allows me to choose the color map to use. The default here is called Jet, but there are other options as well, and we can play around with these. For example, this is what hot looks like. The higher it goes, the hotter it gets. Here's what summer looks like. Here's what gray looks like. You can experiment with different color map options to make certain things show up in a 3D plot better than others. You can even create your own custom color map if you so choose. Let's go back to Jet. Finally, there's one icon that's very important for 3D plots like meshes here in the Plot Tools window, and it is this one right here. If I click on it, notice that the pointer turns into a little circular arrow. If I click and hold on my plot, 
and then drag it, you can see what happens. It rotates the plot in 3D just using the mouse. And this allows me to manually attain a viewpoint on my surface that might be better than others. For example, this one's pretty good to see the cross-shaped top of the surface, whereas this one is better to see the uh, variances in height. When I'm done playing with my plot, adjusting the scaling and the rotation angle, I can just simply click on the icon here that looks like a pointer, and I'm back to normal. Once I'm done tweaking the plot entirely, I can click on the icon that's right next to the one for plot tools, hide plot tools, and it'll just pop this out into a regular figure, which I can then go and save, for example, using File, Save As, and I can save this as any of a number of different graphical formats. Or I can even create an M file that contains all the specifications and commands used to generate the plot. Something we like to do a lot with one variable functions is plot two of them on the same set of axes. We can actually do this very easily with two variable functions as well. Why don't we try plotting a cylinder along with a plane on the same set of axes so we can try to, for example, visualize how those two surfaces intersect. Let's plot the parabolic cylinder z equals x squared that we met in the first part of the screencast, and then we'll try to superimpose a plane on top of it. So first the cylinder. Uh, remember the first three steps. We have to first define our x variable individually. Let's let x go from negative 3 to 3 again, and also y go from negative 3 to 3. And we need to define the mesh grid that will give us the points to plot. Now let's apply the function z equals x squared. Remember, since x is, a, is an array and not just a number, I need the dot caret there uh, instead of just a caret for exponentiation. And then finally, uh, let's do mesh x, y, z to get the plot of the parabolic cylinder, and there it is. I won't adjust this plot just yet. Uh, let's now put a plane on this. Let's say something simple like the function z equals x plus y. Uh, that's a linear function and it will trace out a plane in three space. Uh, if I just go back through and repeat the steps I did for the cylinder, ending with mesh x, y, z, um, MATLAB won't plot the plane on top of the cylinder. It will delete the plot of the cylinder. This will be gone and it will create a new plot of just the plane in its place. Uh, and that's not what I want. I want to have the plane superimposed inside this plot here. So how do I do that? Just like with one variable functions, there's a command that I can give to MATLAB that will hold on to the existing figure while putting a new figure inside the same set of axes. And that command is hold on, just like it sounds like it should be. So I'm going to type hold on and then enter. And now, uh, from this point forward, any new mesh plot that I create is going to appear on top of this one. If at some point in the future I really want to stop and just erase everything and start over again with a new 3D plot, I would have to go back to the command line and type hold off to reverse the hold on command that I did. But now I'm ready to put the plane on top of my parabolic cylinder. Let's plot this. I don't have to repeat all four of these steps you see up here in the first four lines. Uh, there's no reason I can't just use the same x and y values. Uh, I think what I'm going to do instead is just let p, let's let that be my plane, p equal x plus y, using the x and y that I've already defined. I've done that, and now let me type mesh x, y, p. My new outputs are called p, not z, so I need uh, to change that there. I hit enter, and I go back to the figure. You can see now I really do have these two surfaces uh, in the same set of axes. Now, one, the reason I was doing this was to try to find perhaps the intersection of these two things. It's not totally uh, obvious, unless you start looking carefully, that there even is an intersection here. It's certainly kind of hard to see. So uh, one, there are at least a couple of things I can do to help me visualize this intersection. Let's go to the Plot Tools window and manipulate the plot a little bit. One thing I can do is just simply to rotate the plot so the intersection becomes a little bit more apparent. I'm going to click on the Rotate icon and then I can just spin this around and here I begin to see, that's from the bottom up view, here's a good viewpoint that shows that intersection right along through here. If I wanted to make this even more apparent, I go back and click on the uh, edit plot icon and maybe change the color map. Uh, and playing around with this, I found that bone uh, gave a nice uh, sort of sharp look at that intersection which appears to be just a plain parabola. I'm so happy about finding that, I can now go over and add perhaps a text arrow with, a, with a, an annotation here that points out exactly where that intersection is and point to it. 
then I can quit out of this and now I have a nice plot that shows the intersection and points to it.